My name is Sally Apps, I'm the Principal at Bristol Metropolitan Academy and my subject specialism is English. I came to Bristol Met in 2011 and I came to the role of Vice Principal. That's after a career in Manchester. I'd worked in Oldham originally as a secondary English teacher. I'd done some leadership of Key Stage 4 and then I moved to a school in Stockport after three years um, and that was to lead literacy in a school where literacy had been highlighted by Ofsted as a key reason for that school being given a notice to improve. Um, and the school was on already on a, a brilliant improvement journey at the time and I joined with a brief to improve literacy. Uh, I did that um, and then I led on intervention. Uh, I also then, there was an opportunity to work with data and to become the data manager alongside uh, my intervention and literacy roles and I didn't know very much about that particular role but learned quite a lot doing it and learned how to look at data afresh. Obviously with an English background it wasn't an obvious choice to work with data necessarily and to um, and other people questioned that too and wondered why I wanted to do that and it was really about the fact that the, the numbers told a story and it, they all linked to children and to their life chances so that I was quite passionate about that and I could also link it to how to then intervene with children how to support their their own literacy journey better so there was a, a cohesion in that for me and that led on to a role then which was essentially a raising standards role I was the director of achievement and standards in that school which was at assistant headship level and I did that for three years um, and then the time was right for me to move on um, and that involved a move here to Bristol Metropolitan Academy to join as vice principal and to join another school that was on a, a steep improvement journey and I've been here now for two years and I've just started my role as principal. It was important for me to choose MPQH uh, for a number of reasons. I have always had good leadership training. I started with Fast Track and had some interesting leadership training right at the start of my career, which helped, um, but also just gave me a background because I wasn't a leader at that time. I was learning about what leadership meant very early in my career and I needed to get some experience under my belt. Um, so I learned a lot of theory about leadership and some aspects of leadership practice and I was promoted quite quickly. But really I learned a lot about leadership from doing it, from doing my job and uh, working alongside other people and having great role models. I've been very lucky that uh, I've worked with people who are extraordinary leaders up to this point. And following the fast track training that I'd had, uh, I followed the Leadership Pathways programme that uh, for the then NCSL uh, had and I really enjoyed that and there was quite a break when I then moved uh, into a new role um, and it was seen as inappropriate to start an MPQH course sooner than you aspired to be ahead which would make, obviously makes a lot of sense and at the time where I started to think about MPQH, it was because I wanted to involve myself in some professional training again, having had a few years, five, six years, without any formal leadership training. I'd learnt a lot on the ground, I'd learnt a lot from the people around me, and I felt it would be a really good chance to bring all, all of my learning so far together and deepen it a bit further. And I knew that it would also give me a really good grounding for what I knew would be my next step, which would be to be a principal. I didn't feel comfortable with the concept of aiming to step up to be a principal without having done some of that thinking first. And it's been critical to my role since I've started that I had that period of thought and reflection and networking and guidance. Um, and that I was presented with challenges and problems to try to solve and think through and other people who were like-minded to think those problems through with. In its entirety, I found the MPQH course useful. I think my experience within the Cabot Learning Federation up to that point meant that I was exposed to some quite extraordinary leaders at a number of levels. And being able to take that experience and take the kinds of relationships and dialogue that I'd learned to engage in into the MPQH to start with, I think gave me 
a real advantage and it meant that when I joined my MPQH course I felt very at home very quickly. Um, the, the people on my course um, were excellent and I, I've been able to make some contacts and, and friends that I expect to keep um, for a long time. There will be other heads in Bristol as I'm a head in Bristol in the next few years so I'm very excited about the fact that I, I've, had to, I've been able to work alongside those people so far. I think probably the most challenging part of the course for me was the part that I think I learned the most from and that was the practical experience in another school. So my experience um, prior to MPQH was that I hadn't worked in a school that had already received the Ofsted Outstanding label. I'd worked in schools that since then uh, may have been judged so, but at the time when I worked in those schools they weren't judged that way. And I wanted to, to see what it was like to work in a school that, that was outstanding and that had a different context. So I chose to work in a school um, that was much more rural, much larger, had a very different intake to our students um, and ha had a long-standing uh, reputation as an outstanding school. And I did find that challenging because it was very different to what I knew already and I found it extremely rewarding because I learned a lot about myself, I learned a lot about what it means to gain respect from other people when you don't necessarily have a title that gives you that, um, when you have to just turn up and pitch in and um, share your expertise where you have it and learn from others where you don't. Um, I learned an awful lot about, about working with people when there's no reason for them necessarily to, to do what you ask um, or to work with you until they have seen what you can offer. And I was given such a warm welcome by the principal there and by the senior team there and I learned an awful lot. It was, it was the, just the best experience for me. Um, so there were lots of parts of the course that were excellent. Um, the, the days that we spent actually in our MPQH um, learning when we were all together reflecting on the reading that we'd done and reflecting together on um, different themes and different ideas that linked leadership. Those were really important parts of my learning. I was also um, lucky enough to have some coaching from a, a CLF mentor in the course of my MPQH that had a huge impact on helping me to draw out what the key points in my learning were, where I needed to focus next, um, and how, I think as well, how I was managing the emotional journey that was running alongside um, the leadership journey. A lot of leadership does actually involve needing to be resilient and understanding your own emotions and using those uh, to good effect. So the coaching that I had particularly helped me with that too. I felt very well supported uh, during the course. It was the first time that this course had run, so the CLF Teaching School Partnership Group. Um, run this MPQH course and I have I was part of the first cohort to go through and I was the first person in the first cohort to go through to um, assessment and what that means is that there wasn't necessarily always um, an awful lot of other people there weren't uh, other people that had gone through the experience in quite the same way that I had to be able to draw from so you might expect that that meant that the support wasn't very good um, but in fact, the reason that I was able to be successful in my course was because the support provided by the CLF was excellent. And that was in the course of uh, the delivery of the programme, the quality of the programme, the fact that it was always delivered in schools, um, in real schools, in sometimes uh, in noisy environments, and it wasn't, they weren't plush hotels, and there, it was you know, the, the, your, a usual school experience. But I think that brought to it a reality and a life that um, gave it real integrity and it was great at the very start of the programme to engage with Sir David Carter uh, and with Claire Carter um, in thinking about uh, what leadership meant to me and what leadership has meant to him um, in his journey as a leader and what the CLF schools mean to him and what the Bristol community means to him as, the, as now the CEO of the Federation. And it was really interesting. Um, one of the best parts of the course was that the Federation used its own resources really wisely. So we had the opportunity to talk with the heads of the different secondary and primary schools uh, within the CLF. And we were able to ask them questions about what it was really like. We were able to watch assemblies in schools or 
um, to be involved in usual school processes. And that meant that it, there was a real, a real synergy between the learning that was, was taking place in the course, the learning that I was doing in my own school, but then also when I was going to talk ideas through, when I was going to take, place in, take part in activities and sometimes do some really challenging thinking, I was doing it in a real school environment um, with other people that are still engaged in schools, it's not far removed, you don't, you don't disappear off to a training centre or a posh hotel somewhere and receive wisdom from somebody that's not doing it anymore, actually it was all very grounded in real experience um, and I think that means that the support uh, was very thorough and very helpful and as I mentioned I had a mentor within the CLF, my own principal at the time um, gave me a great deal of support and challenge and asked me questions about what was what I was doing and I had other the nature of the CLF is that I had other friends and leaders in the Federation who were interested in, in my learning and uh, because we're like-minded because we have similar interests I was able to think ideas through outside of the course too that linked back into it so I was very fortunate um, and I think other people that were in my cohort felt the same uh, we made a good choice I would recommend the course, I would recommend the MPQH course because of the content um, partly and the fact that there's an awful lot of really high quality information and guidance and reading in the online community and in the written materials. And I'd also recommend it um, delivered in the manner that it, it was delivered for me which was through the CLF teaching school and that's because of the quality of the face to face days that we had. Um, the quality of the networking, um, the tutors that we had on the course were outstanding, um, the guest speakers that we had as part of the course were really thought provoking and were used very wisely to give us plenty to think about and to also then give us time and space to discuss and, and consider ideas together. Uh, I think the support that I got beyond those face-to-face -face days when I was doing my written projects, uh, when I was preparing for my uh, out-of-school placement. The support that I got from the CLF was, was excellent um, and I, I think that to have it all based in schools and to have it delivered by people who were recently heads or by guest speakers who are currently heads um, has been a real strength of the course and it, it means that I've really enjoyed it and I've also got a great deal out of it.